to Wrocław in southwest Poland and the Sky Bowling Lanes for more coverage from the 2012 Kubica AMF World Cup. One of the uh, major competitions in Tempin Bowling, but also one of the toughest and most well attended annual sporting festivals in the world. Well, it reflects the popularity of the sport. Millions of bowlers bowling in 90 registered countries in over 16,000 bowling centres worldwide. And, uh, the turn of the men now to compete for this World Cup. 48th winner we will get uh, after uh, this evening's competition. A couple of uh, pretty well-known faces up there stepping up for this semi-final. Andre Gomez of Colombia, well, we've seen him in action on Eurosport quite a few times, and uh, successfully so on the PBA. The Colombian up against the uh, Malaysian, Siafik Ridwan. And Ridwan also with a terrific calibre. And both these men looking to get through to the final to play, I don't want to say a virtual unknown cast, but that is really what we have with in Marshall Kent of the USA waiting for the winner of this one. Yes, not everybody has heard of uh, Marshall Kent. He's a young 20-year-old from the USA. And uh, we'll tell you about him in the final. But at the moment, we have uh, Andres Gomez in Saifig Ridwan, and it's Saifig to start, Malaysian champion. Starting off left-hand lane. And uh, trips the four pin for a nice little strike to start with. That's uh, always the way we like to start. Not exactly in the pocket. Gomez uh, has got a familiar face in his corner. South African bowler just uh, sitting behind him, Guy Kaminsky. And uh, one of two pretty well known coaches up there on uh, this semi final lane because uh, we've got Holloway Chia. 70 years of age in uh, Siafik's camp. Yes, he's one of the uh, world's greatest coaches, Holloway Chi, and uh, many a time he's been here at the World Cup finals as well. National coach for Team Malaysia. In the orange top. Yes, I didn't realise it was Guy Kaminsky. Personal friends of uh, both of us. We know him well. <laughs> We, uh, we get to keep up with quite a few uh, of the stories in the bowling world through Mr Kaminsky. A very, very popular player in his own right. He's won the spirit of this World Cup tournament trophy on a number of occasions. But here he's got to uh, put his own bowling ambitions aside and just focus up for uh, Andre. Keep him on the straight and narrow. This is a, a lane that can score highly if you can find your line. Slightly incongruous technique of uh, Siafik, but a uh, powerful lad. Well, he's very tall, you see, and he doesn't quite get that deep knee bend uh, to follow through, so he's coming down from a bit of a height. Takes a spare away in lane for three, so he's uh, double to start with with a spare. He's averaged uh, 221 this week for 36 games with a high game of 279. And as Gomez, 225 average. A 287 high game. Only won 300 this week in the men's division. That was uh, Mike Hello Kalika from the Ukraine. Out comes the brain ball for uh, Gomez. Quite a popular ball, that choice, the spare ball. Yeah, so uh, pretty much even, just one pin on it after three. And there's some great reaction in the back end. We're playing on 40 feet of lane oil. It tapers down from the foul line. And uh, when the ball comes off at 40 feet, of course, there's all the reaction. And the ball meets the dry part of the lane, and it just hooks up. And hopefully goes in the 1-3 pocket and carries all 10. But, uh, single four pin there for uh, Saifig Ridwan in the fourth frame. Still close. Let's have a look at these two styles. First of all, uh, see if to bowl his second delivery. The taller bowlers, as Cass said, don't get that knee bend, so it always looks like they're bowling the ball uh, around the legs, but that could also produce 
quite a lot of power and rotation just naturally through the uh, the throwing arm. Siafik just struggling a bit to find those strikes, but when we go across to his opponent from Colombia, who was born and raised watching uh, the PBA on satellite TV before he made his move to the States, this is classic, and I always feel there's a touch of Norm Duke about him. <laughs> yes, indeed. Andres Gomez plays the PBA tour. This is his uh, first title earlier this year, but he's... Uh, Multinational winner in the uh, Pan American Games. Many, many medals. Man from Colombia now lives in Florida because obviously, if he plays the national tour in the States. You won't be covering airfares back and forth from Colombia too often. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, you've seen uh, Saifik Ridwan before on television. He was in the. Uh, Euro Challenge in Paris way back in uh, 2011. Came third in that particular tournament. So as I said, we have seen him before, but at the moment he's struggling to uh, get some strikes out. He's gone five spares in a row. So he hasn't quite got his radar sorted out. That one needs to be redirected. Still can't quite make it. Holloway's still looking pretty cool behind him, the uh, Malaysian coach. I think he'll he'll be trying to reassure his young charge that there's plenty of time in this game. And even if the first one doesn't go well, and he still has that opportunity to come back and win it 2-1, which is exactly what happened in the women's final. Dramatic stuff as uh, Guerra missed out on her chance to make it three in a row. Yeah, Gomez uh, moves a seven pin in the corner. That's a straightforward spare. He's uh, got five strikes and two spares. And that's not a real brain, we must uh, point out, inside his spare ball. Moves across to the uh, <coughs> left-hand lane, lane 10. Which other players we've seen using this uh, this particular style of spare ball? Dominic Barrett, of Dom, England. Dom he, uh, he's the got one. one in the armory, hasn't he? He has indeed. Yeah. Let's hope they stop there with the body parts inside the ball. <laughs> okay, yeah, back better. on after that's five better. frames. Yeah, kind of trundling along this first one. I, I just think these two guys are trying to find their way in this semi-final. There's a lot of nerves pinging about here. And when you've got a, a youngster who, you know, isn't familiar with this kind of high-pressure environment at the international level, I think, you know, both of these guys will be thinking, well, if I can get through here, this is this is golden opportunity to get the World Cup in the kit bag. Yes, absolutely. Seifert has just uh, rolled a double in frames eight and nine. So he knows after all of those nines that he's had that strikes will come. It's just a matter of waiting. Oh, yes, that's nice from Gomez. Yeah, great looking shot there. He could actually uh, shut out to Saifik here if he gets a decent count in the tenth. He's gone across the head pin. The nine spare here will give him 236. And unfortunately, as Holloway Chi will be telling Saifik, you can strike out and only make 234. So already the first game is won and it goes to uh, the Colombian, Andre Gomez. Yeah, not too much for, uh, for Camo to say. Gomez is coach in this first game. It's all been pretty straightforward. Siafik has struggled really with his line. He struggled with getting those groups of strikes together, which we know you need to find at this level. But he's a classy bowler and he's got a classy coach right behind him, so let's not count him out just yet. Yes, he's finishing very well. I was just going to say, have you ever known Karl Kaminsky not have too much to say? Yeah, unfamiliarly quiet. <laughs> Poor old guy, we're giving him a, giving him a hammering today. It's Please. just two pins, uh, Simon, 236 plus 234, but it's a win. 
Yeah, mighty close in that first one. But Gomez is the man to beat now. Can he keep it together? Ridwan needs to find the line that's going to work for him. And uh, looking forward to seeing Marshall Kent in action in the final. It's not unusual for young players to uh, find their feet and cut their teeth here at the uh, Kubica AMF World Cup. He uh, already has the uh, junior title in his bag, won that in uh, Thailand back in June. So, you know, we know he's a class player and I guess the youngsters can play without pressure. They've got a lot of time ahead of them. Well, the thing is, if you're at national level, especially in uh, the USA, you've got some of the best coaches in the world standing behind you, <clears throat> giving you directions if you need it. And of course, the collegiate system does allow you to experience pressure on playing in front of crowds, and quite a few of those matches are televised as well. That's the ball that we like seeing, obviously, with the brain inside it, but it's the ball that Gomez doesn't want to see taken out too many times in game two. He wants a 2-0 victory here. Yes, he'll certainly be going for it. I mean, if you've got to one foot on the, rung of the first rung of the ladder, you want to go one more, don't you? You don't want to go to uh, overtime. Just topples that 10. Took its time. I think he's working on two strikes. Looking to make three in a row, straight out the trap. Oh, oh. well, <laughs> that might help. That's a Guy Kaminsky special, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't say that, but uh, it was a strike. It doesn't matter. It's three in a row, and he'll be looking to make four as well. He's going to get back from that uh, two-pin two defeat in the first game. Yeah, he's laying the ball nicely out on the lane, getting some good distance. Great reaction in the back end. Carries four strikes in a row. Well, Gomez has got another one as well. He makes a double, so he's clean as well in the fourth frame. And he goes high across the head pin, leaving the six and the ten, which should be a straightforward spare, but he's pulled that one left, I think. Oh, and he's, no. Oh, no, he's, no, no. He's missed them both, Simon. Well, second time he's gone across the head pin on the left-hand lane in this match, and this time he's paid the price. That was, a, that was a pretty weak shot for the spare. That's opened the door for this man. Well, it was a big error from uh, Andres' for, uh, position. It, it, it was a makeable spare, and he just missed it totally. And so Seifig has gone five strikes in a row and jumping all over. Just to get that lead extended. And it's up to 40 pins already. That open frame from Andres Gomez has cost him dearly. That's not too special either. No, he started crossing. Now, the lanes may be breaking down just a little bit. Both players have uh, got a little bit of overreaction. So I think he's got the three and the six pins to spare, but a hard straight ball will take that away nicely. So five strikes in a row to start with. He's got a comfortable lead. Gomez, the man that has to do the work now. He's going to come back with probably three possibly four in a row to cover that open frame. He's made a definite move left on the approach. Putting this ball down more in the middle of the lane.